Today I'm going to be going over 10 of the very best blue fragrances that you can buy right now on the market. None of these are discontinued. Um, if I were featuring discontinued things, that would change the landscape a little bit, but these are all in production scents that you can get at discounters across the board for prices below retail, making them all a great deal uh, in terms of a, a relative number. So what I mean by that is some are gonna be more expensive than others, but with that price, you do get better quality, you get a better product, and compared to other products from that same brand, they work out to be a pretty good deal. And a blue fragrance, to me, simply, it is something that uses a lot of ambroxan, something that's kind of that shower gel, fresh, clean type of mass-pleasing scent. Everyone's going to have their own definition of it, so it's kind of just uh, a basis-to-basis -basis type of deal. Everyone's going to have their own definition of it these days, so it's kind of going to be up to whatever you consider to be a blue scent. But I think when you take a look at all the popular ones out there, whatever emulates those is a blue scent. And generally, when you break it down, it's going to be scents focusing heavily on ambroxan, ambergris, citrus, that sort of thing to create a nice, clean, fresh mass pleaser. So again, I will drop links to these down below to discounters and also have a mailing list you can sign up to. That way, if you want to get any of these that may be out of stock or whatever, uh, whenever they do come into stock, I send out an email. But really what it's for is the rare, discontinued, and hard to find gems. Things like the One Luminous Night, Lana Wee Blue Electrique, uh, Aqua de, or Invictus Aqua 2018, Aqua de Joe Profumo, uh, Dior Own Parfum, things like that. You sign up, I promise I'll get you taken care of. Now, let's get things kicked off with Roja Parfums Elysium. Got to have this one around. Now, this is going to be one that is a little bit more expensive, comes at a higher price tag, but with that price, you do get a supreme quality scent. I mean, this one is smooth, fantastic from opening to dry down. It's going to be a little bit rich for some people, you know, in terms of price point. It's not something that I think everyone should just go out and blow a bunch of money on. This is the type of thing that you really need to sit down and decide if it's worth spending that type of money for your particular situation. I can tell you, if you do have a little bit of extra spending money laying around, you want to dip into a more premium product and you still want to maintain mass appeal, this is one of the best places to start. It's all about the vetiver, the ambroxan, ambergris, black currant, lemon, bergamot, lime, a whole bunch of stuff, right? It's great for summertime, so it's perfect right now. Something that you can wear for any situation. The Parfum Cologne even has pretty good performance as well. All around, it's a fantastic blue scent and a big people pleaser. Next up, one that made my number one spot on my summer list, a little spoiler, Rasasi Hawass. It's all about the plum, ambroxan, watery notes, bergamot, apple. Okay. Now, this one is essentially the Invictus Aqua DNA. Um, you know, I could have tossed in Invictus Aqua 2016, but again, I'm not featuring discontinued scents. Now, ultimately, though, I think now, even with the, the broad landscape that we have of Invictus Aqua smelling scents, this is the best one, and ironically, this kind of started it all. It's a 2015 release, so it's been around the longest, and it's one of the few standing that is still the best out there. And when you also couple that with the fact that it's you know 44 to $50 on discounters, it makes it a great price point. You get great performance out of it, another big people pleaser, something that you can wear anytime in the spring and summer. Next up, we have YSLY Le Parfum. So what I love so much about this compared to the Eau de Parfum, for example, is that this is considerably more smooth. You know, when I was putting this video together, I picked up the Eau de Parfum, picked this one up, I smelled them side by side again, and each time I do that, I'm reminded of just how much more refined the Le Parfum version is. It's refined, a little bit more silky, loses some of that sweet, kind of fruity, juvenile bite that the EDP has. And it's one of those deals where when you just wear them standalone, you might not notice and appreciate the differences as much compared to when you do get them side by side, head to head. So that's important. You know, if you're just smelling things in department stores and you're not trying them side by side, you can kind of get lost down the rabbit hole of, oh, they're not, um, you know, all that different from each other and it's a wasted purchase when that simply isn't the case. You put them head to head and you can see the differences really shine through. I love this one. It's one of my favorite versions. This, the new Eau de Parfum Intense fantastic releases, but it's a great blue scent nonetheless. 
Next up, we have Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue O Intense. Using the amber wood in here with some sea notes, kind of a sea salt accord, some grapefruit. It smells beautiful. Um, one of the most popular aquatics on the market, one of, uh, not the, you know, Aqua de Joe comes to mind and quite a few others that are, are very successful, very popular. But this one is still kicking pretty strong in 2023 even. It's pretty high on the bestseller list of all of the major discounters and retailers for a good reason. I mean, it's a great scent for the money. Would I recommend going out and buying this one at retail? It simply isn't necessary. Grab this one at discounters for a, a price that is much better and much more fair. But if you want a pretty photorealistic aquatic scent, but it still maintains that mass appeal, this is one you should definitely check out. Next up, we have to feature one of the greats from this line, and this happens to be my favorite in particular from Chanel. It's Blue de Chanel. This is the Parfum. So I think a lot of people are still in the camp of the EDP and even the EDT. I don't think the Parfum has quite branched out as much as those others in terms of a, a following or fan base. I think everyone probably thinks of Blue de Chanel, Eau de Parfum, when you think of Blue de Chanel, right? It's kind of the, the uh, staple, I would say, these days. But the Parfum, to me, is the winner if I had to choose one. I really like it because of the lemon zest in here. It gives it a little bit of a different twist. You still get that smokiness. You get some more focus on woods. It's a little bit more dense, a little bit more sweet. However, it still does maintain that Blue de Chanel DNA. And after all, this DNA is what started this whole crazy trend of blue scents that is still continuing now into this year. So if you want to get one, I think you should just go out and sample them. Pick which one you like the best. For me, it's the Parfum. Aqua de Joe Profonda was also a great pick. You know, it's got the sea notes, the mineral notes, and even though not listed, it does kind of give off a ambroxany, ambergris, kind of salty, sweet, sparkly note in here. And so I'm kind of lumping it into this video. Maybe it's a little bit of a stretch, but I think it can work. Ultimately, I believe this is one that pretty much every guy should have in their collection. If you're someone who thinks the Aqua de Joe line is overdone and overrated, I strongly encourage you to try Profondo. It is very good. Um, it's, it's just so much more different than all of the other aquatics on the market. Miles different than Light Blue O Intense, miles different than the original Aqua de Joe and all of the other flankers, and just compared to all of the others on the market in general. There's something special about this. It's one that will make you stand out. It's got great quality, great performance even, and again, it's something that everyone is going to like the smell of. Let's keep it moving with an affordable one. Sub $40 range. Versace Dylan Blue. Yeah, I mean, you can get this for $40 to $45, depending on if you're getting tester or not. Now, my advice to you, I've shared this many times, if you're going to pick this up and you're going to make it your signature scent, your daily wear, invest in the 200 right out of the gate. It's a little bit more money. The bottle is ginormous, but you are saving money this way because if you are wearing this as your everyday scent, you will start to run through that 100 mil quicker than you would imagine. And so instead of buying two 100 mils, you can buy a 200 mil and save money that way, especially at this price point. That's my opinion, though. A lot of you probably don't need that, probably not necessary. But again, as a signature scent, get the giant bottle. This one has incense, some C notes in here, um, a little bit of amber, ambergris, ambroxan, whatever, patchouli. This is one of the sweeter, more nighttime oriented blue scents out there. In fact, when you look at the whole video, this is probably the sweetest one in here. But really, it's that incense patchouli combo that makes it what it is. And that kind of throws it into being compared to Aqua de Jo Profumo, but they're completely different. One of my favorites, especially at this price point, you know, I wouldn't be nearly as excited about it if you had to pay $80 even at discounters. I would still like it. It wouldn't change my opinion on the scent, but the value that this one brings really makes me excited about it, even to this day, and it's a super easy one to recommend. I recommend this to everybody. Next up, we have Dunhill Century Blue. So it's got the Ambroxan citruses, but with iris in here. A little bit of a different take, but this is one of the more mature, kind of classy and refined ones in here. Kind of fits into a similar kind of uh, age level slash, I don't know, what am I trying to look for here? It's gonna be something that people who like Blue de Chanel will like this. 
I hesitate to say that because I'm not comparing scents. This smells completely different than Blue de Chanel. But in terms of the situations you would use it for and the demographic, I think this one aligns with that one. You know, this is going to be something that people will want to wear to events or situations where you want to be taken seriously. You want to smell professional. You don't want to smell playful and things like that. There's definitely a time of place for all of these in here, and I think this is going to be more suited for business meetings and, and more serious environments overall. So a little bit of a unique one in that way. Second to last, we have Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Love it. You know, you could go with the Eau de Toilette. Classic. Uh, the Parfum is great as well. I already featured a huge Parfum in here, Blue de Chanel Parfum. So instead of going that same route here, which they kind of go hand in hand in terms of the progression, I just chose the Eau de Parfum. And you really couldn't choose Elixir for this one because it is so out of the realm of your typical blue that it almost isn't even really a blue scent anymore. So I think when it comes down to it, Sauvage Eau de Parfum is a really nice middle ground. It's not quite as bright and loud as the EDT, not quite as sweet, mature, and silky as the Parfum version. If you're looking for a Sauvage to buy in 2023, the Eau de Parfum is a good one to start with. Last up for this video, we have Parfums de Marly Sedley. So one of my favorite blue, fresh scents from the entire Parfums de Marly brand. Um, in terms of all their summer offerings, this is the one I would choose if I could only pick one. As Ambroxan, no surprise there, but a lot of other citruses and a pretty heavy dose of musk. Kind of clean, soapy, fresh, with a little bit of a soft musk in here. Smells beautiful. Very bright, very sparkly in the high heat. Smells great for summertime, casual, but even formal as well to some extent. It also has a great performance. I love this stuff. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for me. 10 of the best blue fragrances that you can buy on the market here in 2023. Uh, these are all must-haves in my opinion. If you are a fan of this DNA, you should have these, you know? They, they all kind of have their own little unique thing going on. And so I don't really view a bunch of overlap or redundancy with this video, with this list. I think all of these kind of fit into their own little category and each one can be used for different things. I don't regret owning all of these. Um, there are times where I kind of have a craving for each one individually. And so it's not a matter of, oh, I want to wear a blue fragrance. Now I have to choose between these. It's more so, you know what? I'm going to go do X, Y, and Z today. And I think this would be a great choice. You know, Parfums de Marley Sedley would be a good choice for that. I think these all kind of do a certain particular thing very well, at least for me. And it's up for you to find things that kind of fill those roles for you as well. Links will be down below. Deals will be going out to my mailing list. Uh, again, anything rare, hard to find, discontinued, you name it. Uh, I'm looking for it, taking all of the hard work out of it for you. You just gotta put in your email and sign up. And anytime something comes up, I send an email right into your inbox, allowing you the opportunity to make the purchase or pass and wait for the next deal. Um, trust me, you don't wanna miss out. Big things have been dropping lately. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.